In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make um, a set of seamless textures for a seamless material in Unreal Engine. So, what we're going to do, we're going to get an image from uh, Google, we're going to take it into Photoshop, make a set of three different textures, and then take it into Unreal and make a material from there. So the first thing that we need to do, we need to get our colour texture. So this is simple enough. For academic purposes, you can take these as long as you reference them. Um, for anything else, if it does cost, you will need to buy it. But there are royalty free seamless textures that you can get for free as well. So what we need to do, we need to search on Google seamless texture. So you can see that and then space and then whatever material type you need. So. For instance, I'm looking at wood seamless textures. If you're needing concrete or bricks or um, wooden planks, so you can specify, but don't specify objects. So if you start searching like wooden cupboard, it won't give you seamless textures because that needs a bespoke texture. So we need ones that are just the material type that just repeats over and over. So I'm going to take this one, but you find one that best suits your needs. Try get them to where they're square. So if they're square, it's most likely that they will be seamless. So if we right click on the image that we want, so we get this big preview, and then right click and open image in new tab. We then get this image here, which we can copy and paste into uh, Photoshop. So you can see that this canvas here is square. So what we need to do, you need to ensure that your canvas is square. So the image by default, the one that I just copied is 2000 by 2000. But the way games work, it works by what's called power of 2. So it goes from 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 and so on. So you might be familiar with 8-bit uh, and 16-bit and 32-bit games. It goes all the way up now. So 1K textures are actually uh, 1024 by 1024. 2K is 248, 2048 by 2048. And then 4K is 4096 by 4096. So make sure you're doing it by the power of two. This is just something to remember. But most commonly, you'll find 1K textures. So 1024 by 1024. So you can change this by the pixels. So change the width to pixels and then change the width and height to 1024. Also, with the resolution, it might be default at uh, pixels by centimetre and some random number, change it to pixels by inch and set it to 72. So once we've got that, we can create, and it's created, our square. So what we can do there is paste in our image, so you can do that or you can do control V. And then what we need to do, so currently, so control plus and um, minus on the keyboard, so next to the backspace, allows us to zoom out. So if we see here, we can see this preview, the image is quite a lot larger than the uh, canvas that we have. So if you press Control T, it brings up the transform tool. So what we can do, we can start scaling this and moving it so it fits into our panel. So an easy way to make it perfectly in the corners, you hold Shift, you can do a freeform transform, but then it also snaps into corners. So we can do this and make sure it is direct, perfectly in the corners because we need that to make it seamless. So once we've got this, this will now be seamless. So you can do some tweaking. So if you wanted to change the colour of this wood, for instance, we need to find one called Hue and Saturation. This one gives us a lot of options that we can change. So we can make, if it's an alien planet, we can make purple wood that's uh, quite dark. So we can start changing it from there. But I'm just going to delete that because I just want normal wood. So what we need to do, save a copy. So file, save a copy on your computer, save on your computer, and then change this to JPEG. And then what we need to do, we need to save that. So we're going to save that as wood underscore colour. So what we could do as well, if you do T underscore wood colour, this will give us the... Um, naming convention that's typical in industry. So T stands for texture, and then the material type, and then the texture map that it is. So if we save that as a JPEG, make sure to be saving it as JPEG because that's the smallest file size. If you're saving it as Photoshop document or PNG, it'll be a little bit bigger, Photoshop document especially. So save this as color, and then just press OK. This uh, Those default settings should be fine. 
So once we've got that, we then want to make what's called a roughness map. So this will make it so the lighting um, decides how rough it is in engine. So we need a map for that. So if we go to adjustments here, and then we go to black and white, this will set it to black and white. So how roughness works, the more white the texture is, so it goes from black to white, it needs to be black and white. But the more white it is, the more rough it is. So for instance, we go back to adjustments, go to brightness and contrast. So for instance, if ours is an unvarnished wooden floor, ours will be quite bright. And then if we put the contrast all the way up, it'll make it so we don't have very shiny wood grain. Whereas if we've got a varnished floor, it might be that it's quite dark, so it's quite smooth and shiny. But I'm going to do it quite rough. So if we save a copy on your computer, save on your computer, and I'm going to save it as a JPEG, and I'm going to call it T wood underscore roughness. So there we've got two maps. So we just need to make the normal map now. So I'm deleting the black and white and the brightness and contrast layer. And then I'm going to, with the colour, so make sure that the colour layer is selected. Then go to Filter, 3D, Generate Normal Maps. So once we've got this, it'll do some configuring. It's doing all this, and then you'll see this preview sphere. But behind that, you can see this normal map that's being made. So if we just press OK, this will give us a very cheap and quick uh, preview um, of what a normal map should look like. So this is a cheaty way and it might not give us the exact effect that we want but for something like a seamless texture just as a proof of concept this is perfectly fine. So if we save a copy on your computer, save on your computer, JPEG and then if we change this to normal so T underscore wood underscore normal so you'll see what all of these maps do once we go to um, engine here. So once we've got those textures, let's make a new folder. Let's call it materials. And then if we import those three textures that we made, so we've got these three. So if we right click the color texture, so nothing else but the color texture and then create material here. So we've got this now. So if I do M underscore wood, so that's material underscore wood. So we've got the material now. And currently, it's just got the wood texture. So if I put this onto uh, this, for instance. So here, it's quite a nice looking wooden block. But then if we go into the material, we can see that it's just got the colour map. We want the other two as well. So if we open up the content drawer, within the uh, material, and then if we drag in roughness, so let's do it one by one, so connect up roughness, so if we apply that, so let's see if we can see the preview of what the roughness does here, so because it's quite um, a rough smoothness, it's not doing much, but it is, but we can't really tell, so this will make it more of a rough texture, so then Lastly, let's drag in the normal map. So let's see if we can see the difference here. So we can see if we zoom in by quite a bit, we can see what the lighting does with the normal. So if we do that, you can see on these grooves and things like that, there's no actual uh, definition to it. It's just the colour. So if we link up the normal map, you can see that there is some definition to it now. Okay. So this would be something where you'd put this normal map on an unvarnished bit of wood where you can feel the grain and everything like that. So it might be a thing, so if you wanted this to be um, quite a shiny wood, let's just, instead of doing a roughness map, just hold one and click and link that up to roughness, so this will be perfectly smooth. So this zero is fully black, if we do one it's fully white, so it's not smooth at all. So we can start to affect the object as a whole. So we can allow it to be shiny. So this would be the effect of something like varnished wood. So if it's black and white, you hold one and you can do from zero to one, which would be black to white. Or you can hold three. 
So this is where if I just show you on the base colour, we can start to just put in a solid colour. So we can start to put in all this kind of thing. But for now, we want all of these textures linked up. So if I apply that, and then we go to here, we can see that the wood is now defined on here. So the way the mesh is uh, UV'd, there are seams, but if we put it onto this floor, for instance, and then if we... All right, so this floor isn't a great example. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag in a plane. This should provide us with a look at the texture. Right, so there we are. So then if I start to duplicate that around, we can see that we can see a, a pattern, but we can't see where the texture repeats. So we can't see a seam. So we do so we know that this area is where the texture ends, but we can't see a line to indicate that that is the end. Okay, so we've got wood there. Now it's pretty much the same techniques for other different types of materials like stone or metal or things like that. One key difference with metal is if we go into this material, there is a metallic option. So this tells the engine if the object or the material is metal or not. So one key thing, so if your object is metal, obviously put that to metal, but also if you're wanting something like a mirror, you'll want or glass or anything like that, anything that is similar to a mirror or glass. So if I do M underscore glass, I'll show you what we need. Well, actually I'm going to do M underscore mirror. So I'm going to show you how a mirror would work. So if we put in a colour, so again, just do the three, because it's just going to be a solid colour. And then if we put that as just pure white for, for now, let's see how that goes. If we do metallic, if we do that as one, so it's, st it's starting to get to where we want, but it just looks like a metal ball at the minute. So if we go to roughness, so put in another one, put the roughness as zero, this is now perfectly reflective. So, if we then get in a plane, then put that in, oh. so it starts to reflect what's in the world. So we can see this here, and it starts to reflect what's in the world. So because RTX isn't on for this project, it doesn't perfectly reflect it. There's things that you can do, so you can do a reflection capture, reflection capture and that allows the reflections to be a bit more accurate but this shows how a mirror would work so technically mirrors are slightly green so if you make that slightly green you get that and there's also things like refraction if you set the material type uh, to translucent you can do refraction so that's how glass works so there's different ways to do different materials but most commonly, if you're wanting to make a seamless uh, texture set, that's the t tricks that you need to do. So create those three, and you've most likely got the ones that you need for the engine. Again, if it is metal, do a metalness map. But a metal uh, metalness map is just black or white. There's no greys. Okay? So those three, and you should have seamless texture set.